Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of our Arkham Horror Podcast. This is the last episode where we're going to be discussing the classes and no, we're not going to be talking about the neutral classes because that's really just Lola and also like emergency cash. What are we going to say? Lola is great, emergency cash is great, put them in the same deck together, right? And you have a bad deck anyway. You have a bad deck anyway. <laughs> uh, Brynn is here. Brynn is joining us through the magic power of the internet. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, why Cherish Keepsake 0 is good and why Cherish Keep, Keep, Keepsake 1 is bad and uh, a bunch of other things. <laughs> uh, and then uh, a bunch of other things too for this class. Uh, first off, this is my color. Uh, even though I haven't played I'm, I haven't played Survivor much recently, I'm playing an Ashcan Pete deck, my first Ashcan Pete deck since wow. my first run of Dunwich, really? which is crazy. Uh, and I'm enjoying just doing Survivor goodness again. Um, so it's nice to get into that, and the it, it, I love the class because it, they feel very um, scrappy, like their permanent asset scrapper uh, implies, yes. right? I just like the fact that it feels like you're just it feels like you fucking suck, you know? Like well, you, you kind of do. <laughs> it just like you kind of just like you're you're not like strong like guardians. You're not smart like seekers. You're not. Um, whatever rogues are, and you're not magical like the mystics, right? Yeah, you just got what you got. You just got what you got, and it's it also really fits for why I like them as a, as a stat-based investigator, right? Because you kind of just have to, like, make do with what you have and do fun tricks with it. Unfortunately, I feel like the class has evolved in a negative way for what I think they are, because they're just... We always joke that you can't die... But we're going to get to that. We're going to stick with the positives. Brent, I'm going to throw it to you next. What do you like about the Survivor class? You know, honestly, it's most of the things you're going to complain about. <laughs> uh, I like not being able to die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think that's... like uh, that. Yeah, yeah. It's better than, it's better than, uh, better than dying. You know? mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. death, greater than death. It's true. What about you, Travis? Um... I like the theme of a lot of the cards. The uh, like you said, the, the sort of scrappiness cards, like lucky and try, try again and take heart. And I like the failing archetype quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, let's go on um, like less on about the skill archetypes. Mm -hmm. But uh, the failing ones a lot of fun. And I, I do kind of like how they have a very low setup cost and they do things like slightly above average initially, um, but they never really get better. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, there was a big thing for people who might not know this for the longest time, and for the, like that we mean like I think up until the Stella Clark deck was yep. released, they only, they capsed out their cards at three experience. So you kind of just like stopped earlier. And like everyone always, like whenever I, whenever I go on one of my old man yells at Cloud Rants about how I feel like campaigns give out too much experience... People always say, but Justin, that's because you play Survivor. But to me, I have to respond with that to be people. You care. You depend too much on powerful cards. Just be be better. Be better with less. That's all I, I need. Powerful say. cards are surprise means perfect deduction. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> that's all I need. It's true. It's true. <laughs> um, so, any cards that you're flipping through right now, Travis, that have been jumping out at you? I like the Dark Horse Arc tape. I think that's really cool, too. I do like that archetype a bunch. I think that's a really neat thing and very in flavor for red. I'm glad that they've continued to produce cards for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it really speaks to that. It's a, it's a really good card design in that it was printed in Dunwich and it's still just like strong without being broken. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike some of the other things. And, and it go, Dark Horse to me is also like the perfect example of what you said about how like you're just kind of above average but you never like excel at it. So like in the first few mm -hmm. scenarios you get a Dark Horse online and you're like I might be God. Yeah. And then in scenario 7 you're like oh this Dark Horse really doesn't do much. Right. Which I think is also just really cool for um, Red's flavor for it as well. I also really like the cards that like make you, they get better as you do them more often. Like the improvised weapon and winging it, and the uh, other one. Improvised barrier? No, no, no. Close. It's something barrier. Yeah, it's like impromptu barrier. Impromptu yeah, yeah, impromptu barrier. barrier. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those ones and like uh, the upgrade derringer. That it gets better when you miss, right? 
I'm not crazy. Or is yes, that, it is gets better. Yeah, that one. It yeah, like reloads saw. itself and then yeah, gets, it gets better. Yeah, magic bullets. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I like that kind of stuff. Um, this one. Yeah, so if you fail, place an ammo, the magic bullet, and you, you, you take more time to aim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, no, you just you get better at it. Uh, and then, like, the other sort of soft recursion things, like, I think Glimmer of Hope's really neat. Glimmer of Hope is really neat because this card is, like, I, I want there to be another investigator like Wendy and Ashcan who can take advantage of this. I mean, like, I know you can mm -hmm. with Cornered, but just playing this in my Ash Can Pete deck, it's just the value that this card provides is really nice yeah. to make sure your archetype never runs out of gas. I like this card a lot. Yeah. Because it, this card really does nothing, right? It's yeah. just for Wendy and Ash Can right now, really. And also Min can take advantage of it, but she's kind of, you know... If you're playing a more supportive Min, it's very strong. It's like okay in Patrice. Yeah. Uh, again, yeah. if you're playing more supportive role, you just want to help other people do their things a bit better. <laughs> it is uh, it is very powerful in a min deck with the grizzly totem. Yep. The yellow yeah. grizzly totem. You're just like, check out how many cards I can make everybody draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But also plus threes to your tests. Yeah. Also seems also seems yeah. pretty sick. Yeah. Pretty okay. You know what I don't like? Generic recursion. Like resourceful. Resourceful. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the, like Silas's ability. Like Silas's ability. It's bullshit. I mean, Silas's ability would be totally fine if it didn't also have the thing trigger, yeah. right? But then it wouldn't be recursion. Yeah. But no, but I mean, like, no, the fact that, like, sometimes... You just have that ready to go, huh? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Is the fact that just sometimes the mm -hmm. effect still triggers, yeah. right? It should just remove the... It should just be a safety net. Like, it should just protect your skill card, right? Yep. Like, I know you're highlighting that right there, and this is also something I'm going to talk about. Because I think Silas, I've played Silas a bunch, and I only played him once with Unrelenting. And I think he's good without Unrelenting, but this Unrelenting is kind of just, him and Amanda benefit from it way too much. Yeah, it just breaks the card. And then with everyone else, you look at Unrelenting, and you're kind of like, this is fine. Right. Yeah, it's a fine card. Yeah, it's... I would say it's a good design for other investigators. Yeah, but with it's Silas... It's a good way to like, allow skill decks to like benefit from their skills while also getting something else out of it. Yeah, and, and to me, uh, as, as we were talking about before we started recording, I don't really play Take Heart anymore because I don't, I don't want to fail my skill tests, right? Mm -hmm. Even like my brain tests, I'm never being like, okay, I'm going to fail. So you don't really play the cards that like benefit you from failing either. Yeah, right, because I just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to succeed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make my number fucking 22 mm -hmm. and I'm going to pass that test. Yeah. Uh, and this one, it, what it allows you to do is still draw cards while succeeding, right? Mm -hmm. Which is much more enticing to me. And I've also been talking about unrelenting for a long time. I like the card, but I don't like it in Silas and Amanda because in Amanda, it's fucking insane what yep. it does it just turns into a draw eight the majority of the time this isn't a talk about yellow <laughs> investigators just <laughs> yeah calm down <laughs> they could all be talk about yellow yeah. investigators <laughs> and it could be but yeah. even like looking at the the difference to just even just silas here and turning it into just a draw two every turn like if, if his ability just brought it back and just as a security net totally okay yep but as soon as it gets funky with it not that great yeah, and like the the free unlimited recursion like this is pretty not great for the game. I think. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the interactions between like uh, resourceful and true survivor yep. are kind of bullshit. Like, yeah, it's a little slow and resource heavy, but like, if you're pulling I, back neither rare or snow with like two neither rare snows <laughs> and you're resourceful with this, like, man. Yeah. That's a that's a flaw with neither rain nor snow. It's a flaw with. Do I have Stella? This and Resourceful. They shouldn't be able to get each other back. Neither but also, I think it's... I'm not saying that Neither Rare Snow is right, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not just Neither Rare Snow's fault, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I think it's fine, because at that point, it's not that much different than like playing a Dark Horse deck, right? Like You're effectively playing without money, because you need to be spending money on True Survivor like every other turn. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. payoff is that you get to draw some extra innate skills every turn instead of having plus one to all your numbers. It, it depends a lot on what those innate skills you get back are, right? And if it wasn't either rain or snow, like... 
they're I mean, just if, waiting for a different broken skill. If they're getting like sharp vision back or like expeditious retreat back a bunch, I'm like to me that's on par with the Norman Withers yeah. infinite deduction. No, that's thing, like right? pretty okay. But as soon as you start getting back neither rain nor snows or even just like mm -hmm. returning because uh, this fucker's an aid right yeah no it's practice that it's practice you can even just you get all yeah, the time for fiber it's so freaking crazy <laughs> <Get Justin. laughs> it's just wild man the cards i've been talking about that card being the truth for a long time <laughs> yeah and nor very it's not very often for me to see a card and be like this card's gonna like be really good and then for me to be right mm -hmm. normally i'm like jim culver like skull token travis yeah <laughs> <laughs> the Kosi Mavadi, whatever his name is, is going to be good with Jim. It's yeah. like, uh, still not really. Good with Jim does not mean good. It just means good with Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Heedle Sylvester. He's next on the list. You can pull like, what's her face, too. I can have two at once. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's also Jessica Hyde. Yes. Nice. Plus two at two of your stats and then never dies too good. It is too good. She's fair. She's, She's fair. Cool. She's fair. If we just had the inverse for uh, Pete Sylvester, where he gives like plus one foot and is one three and costs one experience and starts with two horror on him, that's okay. Yeah. Probably still like a little on like very good, but like. I think to me also, so like with, with what um, I was talking about with Bryn, what Bryn was saying at the beginning, how him and I are probably going to have a disagreement over mm -hmm. the why can't I die thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's less actually like the way Bryn doesn't die in William York. You have to work for that, right? Like, you have to kill an enemy, which is your job anyway, so it's not, like, too much work. Mm -hmm. But you need to kill enemies to bring back your cherished keepsake and your other stuff, right? Yeah. It's not just, I'm going to jam Pete Sylvester mm -hmm. and Jessica Hyde with a charisma in my deck, because it means I just won't ever die. In addition to that, I like cards like mm -hmm. Perseverance, where they trigger at a very specific time. But I hate this kind of passive, just can't die thing that any survivor investigator can get into very easily i guess i vaguely remember talking about this maybe i just imagined talking about it earlier but like william york's uh recursion is very fair in my opinion mm -hmm. where it's it's not like resourceful you just kind of get to do it most of the time or you can engineer it's not it, it's fair because y you don't get to always pick when you do it mm -hmm. Right? There's a number of checkboxes that have to be filled if you want to get something back. You have to have the asset you want in your discard. You have to have the money to play it. There has to be an enemy that is killable and that you are able to kill. Mm -hmm. and, right? And then even then, like, recurring, like, a cherished keepsake is not like, oh my god, he's breaking the game wide open. It's like, he found two horror soak, which is good. Yeah, no, right? it's, it's but, not bad by any stretch, but it's not like Salas, who's just like, I get my skill tag back every turn. Mm -hmm. If I'm not, if I don't do it, I'm losing value, so I must. Yeah, and honestly, like, to just before I, we, I want to pass this Will York to Bryn for a bit, but I want to yeah. just, to, for the Silas thing, I like Silas when it was just using your thing as a secure, as a safety net, right? Yeah. Just being like... That was good. That was I, cool. Or like, I failed this test. You fail this test, and you don't waste your overpower, or alternatively, you don't need your overpower, and you bring it back. You don't get the card... You just effectively not lost a card, right? It's like playing that um, butterfly effect that's, thing. That's exactly yep. what the card is. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, it's, you d it's like reasonable. But Silas just shouldn't trigger his abilities on it. And also it's, it's so complicated for new players to be like, this mm -hmm. works with Silas, this doesn't work with Silas. It yeah. should just all work or the not. same way. I mean, and yeah. it, should all, it should all not, not. work. Yeah, yeah. It, it should all not work. <laughs> yeah. Don't pick the yeah, other one, please. I, I think the issue the issue with that one is like the draw two and the after this test ends re release the token sealed here being separate sentences. Yeah. Like if if that's all part of the same thing, then yeah. the card is just fair. Yeah, I agree. Does I wouldn't not. I wouldn't mind seeing it. I mean, it, that doesn't fix the um, Amanda problem, but. Seekers can that's be okay. That's their job. We're not, right? yeah. yeah, we're not worried about the Amanda it. problem because yeah. the Amanda problem is always going to exist in yes. some fashion. But like that would fix the Sowas problem completely. Yeah. Well, for that card. For that card, but I mean the mm. the only other ones that are really noticeable are um, Defiance. Yeah, still, I, I'd like to see that like inter just those interactions gone because it's confusing. Yeah, I agree. I You've agree. explained to me three or four times. I still don't know how the or why it the, works. the defiance one makes sense because the the effect triggers when you reveal the skill token. Mm -hmm. So like you get it then, 
Yeah. As opposed to, you know, like an overpower that says when this test ends. Yeah. Because it's not there when the test ends if you pick it up, but it mm -hmm. is still there when you reveal the token. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> My favorite thing about Silas's ability, though, is that if you play with his book weakness, you can bring it back to get plus two for a test. So. That seems cool. Plus four for a test, essentially, or wow. whatever it is. Yeah, you're like, look at that. Now I just put my weakness, my choice, back into my hand. I'm a pro gamer. <laughs> <laughs> pro gaming move. Now I'm going to take it. Yeah. Oh, God, now I'm going to die. Uh, Bryn, do you want to talk about the not dying part of it? And maybe Will York? Sure. Uh, I think So I think a big part of the reason that I enjoy this more than Justin does is uh, that I don't play with Pete Sylvester. Mm -hmm. And when I do, I have brought him with me to swing a meat cleaver at people. This is true. That's yeah. his purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I used to, I mean, we, we know it. it's the running joke on the channel where Pete was my boyfriend. I would play him all the time back in the day. But just like now, it's just, even just like um, Nightmare Bobble, that one too. It's a cool card. <clears throat> Nightmare Bobble's sweet, <clears throat> and it's really fun, too, and, like, the Dream Parasites are uh, way too minor of an effect for, like, what it does. I just think, like, this and you Catastrophe, just stopping the autofail token, like, I understand that it's a slice of design that they want to exist. Mm -hmm. I just wish it didn't. I mean, like, I think Nightmare Bobble is, like, pretty okay, um... Yeah, maybe, like, if they, they had it where, like, you had to... You just drew one, and once you've drawn three of them, it kills the bobble or something like that. I don't mm -hmm. know. But, like, it's a three-experience card. You can only have one of your deck. Reds, their card draw is not great. I don't know. It's, Unless you're Silas. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's its own problem, though. You Catastrophe, I think they have fixed it. I think it is good. Yeah. I think that uh, where it is now, where you pay two money and three experience... And you get to eat the autofail once and take a star. Like, that's totally fine. Ah, uh, the frick. <laughs> a very fair uh, effect when it gets removed from the game. Yeah. I just, to me, when I was playing my Silas deck, which could be, because it could be the problem with just the card draw that I have. Because as he said, Survivor's weakness is that their card draw ain't the hottest, right? It's Except a for, weakness. for like, like drawing thin, which is also kind of like... <laughs> I was going to bring up also like scavenging where it's like one, a card that is very potentially broken but it is kind of fair because uh, red characters don't have a good book. Yeah. And like your best you get is Min. Min. He's got four. Bob also cards. has four. Yeah, but he gets doesn't play yellow cards. It's true. Yes. Yeah. And, like, that's that's what everyone was also saying, too, with, like, Min and the Necronomicon. Mm -hmm. It busts Necronomicon wide open. Mm -hmm. But, like, at the same time, to me, that's just... That's cool, but it's boring. Yeah, like, right? if, they, if they printed a, a five-book Red Vest gear who was, like, similar power level to Tony, I'd have probably the same complaints about scavenging as I do with Tony. Yeah. Or with Tony in green. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but with the, the Eucatastrophe and the Nightmare Bobble, I just... When, like, when I was, there was that, as it's like the, the Innsmouth run we did for the first mm -hmm. time. The blind, like, our blind runs are usually kind of spooky, right? Yeah. But with that one, there was that point where we were nearing the end, where we were bullying the final bosses, <laughs> and then you were like, Justin can't fail a test, and it's true. <laughs> like, I had, like, yeah. I had two huge catastrophes in hand, Nightmare Bobble. Like, the thing is, I like the um, the design that's more like the new Nine of Rods or whatever it is. Is that the... Yep, Nine of Rods. We get to cycle it. Yes. This is the kind of stuff that I really like in red. I feel like Nightmare Bobble should just, like, even then it could still just, like, have it only be one wild, but allows you to cancel it and then draw a new mm -hmm. token, right? Yep, not like this. I like uh, Test of Will. Test of Will is super sick, yeah. I think that's also a nice card design for... Uh playing against the game. And Bryn, I'll have you know that every time I see this, it just makes me think of Will Yorick. And <laughs> <laughs> They're legally obligated to play those two cards together. Yeah. Yeah, it's even kind of good in him, too. Uh, I also very much like the uh, the variable skills in red, things like Last Chance, Not Without a Fight. I think those are neat. Red has like a lot of 
kind of oddball cards. Yeah. That don't do quite as weird things as purple, but they're just not quite normal effects. Things like those, cards like Waylay, I think is really cool. And actually a lot better than we gave it credit for. Um, you get stuff that like isn't necessarily belong there. Red is, does feel like a little bit like the dumping ground. Yeah. For some effects. Where they printed, they decided, like, yeah, they got, we printed Rito, so Red cares about uh, Evasion now with Belly of the Beast. I and, mean, like, you can, track shoes you can and also stuff. definitely see that because every time they're, like, look at the tarot cards, right? Yeah. And it's like everyone gets a stat and then Red's here too. <laughs> you can have the other things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it is true. It is kind of like the, especially when it comes to cycles, you really see it in cycles for cards. Yeah. 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 Which isn't a bad thing. It's, like, very on brand for the survivor to just be the other stuff yep yeah but um, what other things do i like about red i think lucky level three is like a little too good uh i uh does it exist it does lucky, you mean lucky level three <laughs> <laughs> no, Plucky level 3 is just a good card, I think. Yeah. Right? Which stats does that give? <laughs> Honestly, I think of the majority of those level 3 exposed uh, composures are pretty solid. Yeah, I think they're all pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this one's great. Book and Brain? Yeah, Book and Brain. Yeah, it's and sick. 3 Sanity? 3 Sanity? Yeah, that's pretty sick. And this card is like a little too good that it's free and also it's anyone and it also draws you a card. I think if it was, I think if it was plus, if it still stayed a plus two, that'd be still be fine. I think that's the plus three is a bit. I kind of wish it was just like only you. Yeah, but I, I do like that they have some. It's like a water protection for one test, right? Kind of. Yeah, like it is basically like a water protection, right? Mm -hmm. In a way. Yeah, but the issue with it is like, it's it's not just a water protection, right? Because you can play it so many times. Yes, and this is something that we've we've always talked about on the channel: the risk of the recursion, the power of recursion mm -hmm. in in the game, right? In red, like I would Red's love the one that gets to do it, Justin. Yeah, well, I mean, yellow also has like their own way; like they just cycle through their deck infinitely, right? yeah, which is like a little bit. Yeah, this is actually a conversation we've had on the, the Discord recently. How we're like the whole being able to like when the game was first being designed, they were probably like you can get through your deck once, right? And they're like yeah, that's the level they thought twice. it was fun. Yeah. That was that f fine. But now you have decks that you can like cycle it every turn, mm -hmm. and it's just like that's unhealthy for the game. Yeah, that's no fun. Yeah, no bueno. No. Um, I think resource if, if resourceful even also just had uh, a remove itself from the game after. I think that would solve a lot of problems too, right? If resourceful can only get back a level zero red card. Uh, I, the only thing about that though is I think like we kind of have that with scrounge for supplies, right? Yeah, but the, I mean, like, it would be notably, it'd be slightly better because it doesn't take an action, but you have to pass a test for it. It is true, but I think the thing with, like, resourceful just, if it, I, I would rather it still get the big stuff because it's kind of sometimes still fun mm -hmm. to just play the big stuff occasionally, right? But not to, like, completely, like, repeatedly loop it, loop it, loop it. That's where it becomes a bit yucky, right? Yeah, I mean, like, you don't, you don't get back big stuff unless it's broken, though. Really, what you're not getting back, you can't get back quickly, you can't get back Deja Vu, you're not pulling back your chainsaws usually. If you have to dig deep, it's just in play. Like, you're getting back your, it, it, the exiles itself. No, it's still, it also just discards too on Evade. Oh, really? Yeah, you, oh, wow. you can exile it to defeat everything for oh, upgrade of fire okay. extinguisher. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I think just bringing back the level 3 fire extinguisher, mm -hmm. to me, would make it worth it. Because, like, this card, it is it is pretty hmm. great. It's it's nice. It's a great upgrade. Very like good upgrade. Yeah. yeah. I also really like the exile mechanic, actually. I haven't yeah. had the opportunity to play a Deja Vu deck yet, but I would still Ditto. very much like to. Ditto. What do you mean? I mean, you play this game way more than me. I play it a lot, but I haven't. The thing is, like, <laughs> I'm not... I have to have... There's so many other investigators that I haven't played that chat's like, we want you to play this investigator. Don't listen to them. I have to listen to them. They, they're, they're, they're cool people that give me money. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. No, but uh, right now I'm, I'm doing my whole uh, Jacob Morrison Ashcan Pete, which has been pretty fun. 
and about the power level I like from it mm -hmm. because you have to kind of also work and build around it. It's not just like, you know, do crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. I do really like also the uh, where they, these fail by ones like dumb luck. Uh, oops, and look what I found. Look what I found. Yeah, yeah. Dumb luck level zero, and I mean dumb luck level zero is like okay, kinda. Um, dumb luck level two is pretty solid. Oops, level two is like okay. Oops, level zero. Is just pretty low. <laughs> I think oops, oops level two yeah. is it's. Oops, level zero is not good. It's Even if you good. have four people, it's not good. Yeah. Because oops level two is basically just another lucky, right? Because yeah. it's it just deals the yeah. damage if you fail. It's just another lucky. Oops zero. Yeah. Oops zero is trash. You get yeah. two enemies at your location. This is when <laughs> if someone comes to me and says, I've played oops level zero in my deck, that's what I say. I go, oops. <laughs> <laughs> oops. Yeah. Oh, I, think, uh, stick there. I think the best part about oops level three is where you can, you know, you, like, you take your shot at the enemy and he's like, you missed, and you're like, oops, no, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> the bullet just curves back yeah. into the guy. Oh, uh, look, yeah. Look where I found is the truth. <laughs> the guy's so good. Look what I found to me is, like, um, perfect, like, design. Yeah, this is a fantastic yeah. card design. And then the upgraded one? Is also just incredible and fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like it's just a good peak, card. It's, it's worth just peak experience. survivor. It's, yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, same thing with the sharp vision expid expeditious exped feet. Yeah, that and word. Brute force and brute force. I think are all very well designed yeah. for the red skill archetype. And this is the kind of stuff that when you bring back with true, true survivor, you're not really feeling like you're no you're cheating. No. Yeah. You're just playing a nice clean game. Yeah. God, I love Bruce. I just love that dude's getting freaking his day ruined. He is. Can we talk about drawing thin yet? Yeah, sure, dude. <laughs> Pull up. No, I must really play this card because it's kind of bullshit. I just, I just need them to, uh, to change Nacho's deck building to like exactly what it is and Bruce. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, agreed. Like, there's no way. This is definitely something Nacho would do. <laughs> And it doesn't even like benefit from like it. <laughs> it's yeah, not like, like it you doesn't know, do anything. Yeah, for but him he, that he couldn't do. He punches people in the face. It's what he does. Yeah, <clears throat> there, there's not much to say about drawing thin. It's just it was crazy how quick it got tabooed. Yeah, they printed it like. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they it's, printed the same cycle as uh, track shoes, man. Yeah. <laughs> and like it's just, it's just too good. I've only played this once in the Stella deck Brin built for me. It's pretty nuts. You have, like, with Trax, you just like, hey kid, you want to spend an action and get four resources with no consequence? <laughs> Probably. Oh yeah, you also get to move. Yeah. <clears throat> well, if you fail. Yeah. Or if you pass. No, no, like, you get because the action you're spending is the one where you moved. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like you're not actually spending an action to right, right, two right. cards it's, it's or gain four resources. Right. You're spending an action to move, and you also get these things, too, because yeah. why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? It doesn't have to be resources. It could be two cards or a combination. Yeah. yeah. Really crush that one, guys. <laughs> it, <laughs> it can do all sorts of stuff. That one. Level zero, too, huh? Yeah, and it costs <laughs> zero. Like, there's, there's just a lot of... This is a comic card. Why would you play if it costs you money, Justin? Good point. <laughs> how much does how much does pickpocketing cost? <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Because it really is kind of just like pickpocketing in yeah. a way. It's Red's pickpocketing, except kinda. Yeah. So it's just like designed for Preston, and then they like just forgot that other people could yeah. play it. Yeah. 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 I because think this this card should be a reaction effect. Like when you fail, you gain a skill test. You can gain a resource. Mm -hmm. Oh, like a like a like a rabbit's, rabbit's foot, foot. different. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be that'd be reasonable. Yeah, that would. That would be very reasonable. Or if you fail, if you fail a test by two or more, you can do the thing. Yeah. The same effect. Yeah. That'd be yeah, fair. but it doesn't it doesn't get to make the thing harder. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't get to make the thing harder for sure. I do like the whole. Uh, it's just. Because you, you can see the thought process, right? Where it's yeah. like, we increase it by two, it's harder, they get a reward, right? Yeah. But then, like... What if you just want to fail? <laughs> yeah, like, what if you just want a card? <laughs> yeah. Go on, dude. 
Yeah. I think I think we should get uh, there should be some split upgrade on this one where we get like a green one as well. Mm-hmm. That's uh, like it makes the it makes the test harder, but then you have to you have to pass to get the stuff. Okay. Yeah. And then a red one that just rewards you for failure. Yeah, yeah. Like red normally. And does then a yellow one that you can just trophies. They sh- it, it just it, gives you just a card this, every turn. It's when you successfully investigate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, could you imagine Jeremiah Kirby just every time you successfully investigate, draw a card? <laughs> Woo! Not even like once per round. <laughs> Uh, honestly, though, that's probably one of the slower ways re- uh, yellow can get clues. <laughs> yeah. Scared, scared, get cards. Yeah, but it's yeah. just free. Uh, some of the new cards that came out on this uh, Edge of the Earth that I really like. I really like Jury Rig. Oh, there's mm-hmm. a. Oh, they they oh, they already <laughs> approved it. <laughs> I didn't put a hyphen in, but they already there. Yeah, like yeah. uh, cards like this are cool and fun, and uh, I also like that they can and tell good. a story, right? Where you can put it on an item that's not a weapon, mm-hmm. like brand Jury Rigging Liquid Courage. Right? It's just like, why? What? Mm-hmm. Huh? Like, um, fend off. Fend like off. it makes you better at drinking because you're focused on not getting the barbed wire yeah. that's wrapped around the, exactly. the flask into your fingers. So Yeah. Uh, fend yeah. off's another cool one. When an enemy spawns your, not a lead enemy, of course, spawns your location, uh, it automatically attacks you, then evade that enemy, and it cannot ready. I like these ones and how they play with like Red's healing and damage prevention that they have. Mm-hmm. The fend off and... Uh, and blood will have blood. Those styles of cards. I hope that they don't ban like that. Like they have several other survivor archetypes in the next cycle because the investigator doesn't care about it. <laughs> that, that is actually probably one of the biggest. As you said, it's kind of the dumping ground, right? Yeah. Like a when lot was of the their... last time we got something that cared about evasion for Rita. Poor Rita. <laughs> well, she got it in that freaking uh, spinning kick or whatever it is. The new. Uh... Yeah, but that's not, card. it's like a blue card, though. So it is a blue card. card. Yeah, it's a, yeah it's a, and it is true. They kind of just like... Can I have a multicolor binder when you get the chance? Uh, of course you can. Thank you. I kind of also like this. Uh, it is recursion. Burning after reading. Burn after reading. No, it's not. <clears throat> oh, it's, no, sorry. Yeah, it gets clues. I thought it brought a card back. No, the uh, Shrine of Mirai is the other Mirai, one. Yeah. yeah, that one's cool. Uh, but the exile level zero to five card from your hand. Discover two clues your location. If the exiled card was level two or higher, remove a doom from the current agenda. Exile mm-hmm. burn after reading. This is a lot of things that it, like this seems like this card reads very powerful, and I think it is. But it also costs you a lot. It's going to cost you experience. Mm-hmm. It, it requires you to heavily be in deja vu, which will one day come on the channel. I'm sure once one chat day. allows me. Yeah. I ask. Or we'll be playing. Uh, okay. Or be playing a draft art draft game. Which one, sir? Play, if you're playing a draft game, you can play this to burn the crap cards on your deck. Oh. And try to <laughs> something you have to exile the burn from me. Yeah, you get a burn. You get to exile <laughs> one of your shitty cards and then just turn it into a level zero, which is probably better for your deck than yeah. the whatever it freaking was. Yeah, none of these cards are good for Rita. Yeah, the cards that are good for Rita are all green. Yeah. Kind of. Well, the new ones, anyway. The new ones that are good for Rita. It's because they realized, oh yeah, evading is green's thing. We gotta put it back in there. They're <laughs> uh, These precious mementos are also, like, I think the design on them is really nice, but it also still kind of fits into the thing I don't like, where you just don't die, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're very expensive. They are, they are very expensive. I feel like they're very properly, like I said, I think they're very well designed for what they mm-hmm. do, but, like, I still would rather... I, I think I think I understand where you're coming from. You don't like the never die with like just putting cards into your deck, and it mm-hmm. is similar to uh, Pete Sylvester and Jessica Hyde. But I think that the, the cost thing is just high enough that it's fine. I you, you have to you don't get to play four copies of them. Yeah, you can only play. Yeah, and you can only play like two. You have of to them. buy them individually. They cost you have to do a relic hunter, right? So it's, it's going to cost eleven. 11. Yeah. So it, it, I do agree, it's better. Like I said, I think the design on these is better, but like I hope that this is like it. They don't need more after this, no. right? But of course, because any cycle could be someone's first, you can argue that they might still need after that. But I would argue they don't. They should just stop. They should just they should just stop assuming that someone's cycle could be the first, and just assume that just fill it. Just just reprint the old cycles just, more, please. Just reprint the old cycles more, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like Earthly Serenity in, in Survivor. Actually, I think that's a pretty normally. I don't like. I've never seen this card. <laughs> 
<laughs> Normally, I don't like healing uh, in general, but especially in like the Edge of the Earth campaign. And um, actually, I think this card is just pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the ones that feels the most good, mm -hmm. right? Because it's it's not like some other stuff. Like if this, you spend the charges on success, which I like about a lot of the the spell assets that existed in this cycle. Yep. Where like, and if you fail, you're just like cool. Right. Yeah, I, I like this card very much in the, how it fits into both purple and red. Where in purple, you can just crush the brain test, yeah. and you're like, you're you're fixed. Yes. But in survivor, like you get you can spend your off actions because you're probably if you're the main fire, you're gonna have some turns lying around. You're probably not the main clue getter in red. And then if you're if I mean two player maybe, but in three player, like yeah. you're you're not gonna be able to keep up. You can use your off actions to just like make a couple brain tests and help yep. people out. And also, like, survivors have good brain, yep. right? Like, their brain their brain scores are good. And they probably have a pizza Sylvester in play, which makes it even better. Or Granny. Mm -hmm. Granny, I love Granny. I love it because I, like, hate the level zero version. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Look, not. just because you can fail a skill test by zero. Yeah, I mean, I don't like it for exactly that reason. It's a little unintuitive. Yes, yes. But... I also had a hard time when I saw the full art and you could see Granny Orn's foot. That kind of also brought the um, my evaluation of the card down a bit. But I think I like she's this. She's insanely flexible for an old lady. Yeah, she is. She is. Yeah. Um, but I, I she's think more she's more flexible fun. than I am today. <laughs> yeah, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> When you would fail the skill test. The, the the magic words of just when you would versus when an investigation would. Wait, no, it's the same. What mm -hmm. makes it different? Yeah, what makes it different is that the level zero says when you would, you may exhaust it to fa either fail by one less or fail by one more. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. upgraded so one says get plus one or minus one skill value. It's garbage. <clears throat> So you get to fa you can use the other one to fail by one less, and the game's like, but your numbers are the same, and you're like, I said fail, damn it. Yeah, and you're like, okay, yes, I'm okay. sorry. I like uh, I like Professor William Webb. I think he's a good card design. He's very fun recursion. It's not just because the yellow card. He's fun recursion, but also you can only use it a certain number of times. Yeah, and then you have to like so like basically what that's good card design. What I would wait, yeah, or fights. what Travis is also saying too is here is that you have to also if you want to do more, you need to work to do more. It's mm -hmm. not just one card that I mean you know this is actually your biggest complaint too with some of the new. I remember there was a night we were playing Eldritch, and then you went on a rant about Magic the Gathering, how every card does everything, right? Where you'd yep. rather have multiple pieces work together it's an to engine succeed and something, the payoff. right? And that's what well, William Webb is. Like, he's mm -hmm. just a... He's an engine. Yeah. A limited engine. Yeah. So then you need to do more to make his engine keep chugging along. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think the best, uh, the best thing about William Webb is how he's like, no, that's it. I can't find any more stuff. And then you're like, you want to play a game of chess? You ever move a rook <laughs> diagonally? <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, oh my god. <laughs> so this is the, that's the one of also my favorite jokes that you guys make. It's like, once you let go of your assumptions, anything is possible. He's just moving his rook diagonally across the yeah, board, and you're like, yeah. wait a minute. There's, yeah, moves you can't do that. And, you can ends, and it's just like, look. Yeah. He's like, you're committing some sort of crime here. I just don't know what it is yet. Yeah. <clears throat> what do Bangle yeah. Jinxes do? Benefits you from getting smacked. Oh, okay. It's like pretty solid, actually. Yep. I like that one. I can see playing that in... Uh, recently added it to the Tommy Muldoon Expand decklist. So. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, as, going with what you're saying, like, hopefully that they don't just abandon Daniela in the next cycle because she could prob... I know they're going to. I, mean, I know <laughs> the thing, right? <laughs> But like she probably, she's an investigator who is going to need either more weapons or more ways to take advantage of getting hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You and know what they're gonna do? They're gonna be like, check out the survivor. You know what they care about? Revealing extra tokens. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> oh, not that one. It's on. It's in that slot on a different page. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. 
the next uh, the next cycle they're going to be like red cards for Daniela. This one stops you from taking damage when you get attacked by healing itself every turn. <laughs> doesn't take yeah, that's up how any they're going to support her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it'd be more fun for her to be supported by cards that benefit you from getting hit as opposed to cards that just make you not die. Yeah. All right, but here's the crazy thing they're going to do. Daryl Simmons he takes pictures of tokens that he draws from the cup. Then you save those tokens. You know what red cares about? Stealing tokens. <laughs> Let's go! With no purple cards, no purple cards. Let's do, and, then, and then we get this weird yellow archetype that also cares about drawing tokens. It's crazy. They already do that. You draw the token and you get a bunch of clues. It's true, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're probably right, though. We're going to get an investigator who cares about drawing tokens and the number of tokens they draw. Get plus one to your test for each token you draw. Or if you've drawn three or more tokens in this draw, test, draw you automatically succeed. Or you automatically succeed. Oh my like god. So, Tristan Bodley. Tristan Bodley. The investigator. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about the, uh, some of the Exile cards. Sure. Specifically. Those ones are cool. Yeah, the Exile stuff's really cool. Yeah, so this is like the only I real card. I think I've seen this card before. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> All right, so going through notable ones, uh, Flare, which is... Flare is just, like, really good. Flare is really good. <laughs> just yeah. really good. They're all experienced, because, you, you know, if they weren't, <laughs> they got pointless. Yeah. So Deja Vu, this guy's... Instead of going to make a point, they realize it's stupid. Yeah. As we get going here, it's, uh, in between scenarios, you reduce the experience cost to repurchase up to three of the cards you exile the last scenario by one each. Mm -hmm. So this works well because you can exile them freely. And then in addition, you also are going to be probably, if you can get to a level five red card, your pool of upgrades is very shallow so you'll be able to use them to also buy other uh, exile cards or in addition pay for ones that you have spent so flare i believe it costs one right yes. most of them cost one or two mm -hmm. flare very very good card yeah you would can... play even if i'm not <laughs> yeah because it's just the that attack is like plus three fist and plus two damage a good weapon attack and be, like the ally thing is actually insane one thing that makes this a lot better um, is when we found out much later after I played it the first time was that if you don't find an ally from the search, you don't exile Flare. Mm -hmm. It's only, it's the then comma. So the then comma is only if the first thing actually happens. Yeah. The exile archetype is a little bit weird where like they printed some at the start and most of them are kind of trash and yeah. then they didn't they for a long time. It. But that, that but. makes sense with what you're saying about how Survivor... Yeah, we can get more into like the stellar type. So fire extinguisher and devil's luck, neither of which are not the good fire extinguisher we showed earlier. Yeah, <laughs> that one's just good. And then this one, it's um like it it's could, just so much. It's just a lot. Like just play perseverance, man. Because like this one also came in here because this the ten damage and or horror was probably from a carryover of the design file from the glimpse the beyond or whatever it is from the Dunnage Legacy, yeah. the one that deals you ten damage when you shuffle your deck because. That, at first, that was something that you just never did, as I said earlier. So that's what that's card's here for, but the thing is that number is just too big to make it worth it. And yeah. then the bad fire extinguisher. Yeah, yeah, it's not an issue of the number being too big, it's an issue of that like you are paying for the number to be that big. Yes, yeah. yeah. No, this fire extinguisher, is, it's a weapon that doesn't do extra damage. That's, that's not good. It's not good. And it's then, not a weapon, it's a tool. Whatever, man. <laughs> you can hold you can hold fire extinguishers in the extra slots of your detective's 1911s. If he could somehow play them right, he could. Uh, yeah. And then... Uh, uh, the higher, higher level versatile. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's go. I hope that we don't get high level versatile. I think that would be... <laughs> You gotta add ten oh, cards to your deck and you get a one level one card. There's no way they could count. Like, if... You could even just play like level two cards or whatever. There's no way they could account for uh, some of the stuff you could do with that. Yeah, it classes. Would, it would just It'd be a very poor decision. It would kind of just like yeah, ruin the whole point of having class identity. Yep. Some other guiding spirit exiles itself, technically. Only when it dies. Yeah. yeah. So just don't. Unless you're using it as horror soak, it's really strong horror soak. Yeah, and even then. For that price. And then even then, if it dies and you're playing Deja Vu, you just get it back for free. Yeah. Right. This I think Guiding Spirit is pretty sick, but there's just... Man, if I could play this in Bob Jenkins, you can bet your ass I would be. I like the Guiding Spirit. It's like playing over her shoulder, like, sh her shoulder and he's like, 
Hey, look, a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the friendly what? ghost. Yeah. I just think the idea of playing this with playing this with the vacuum salesman would be great. Like, yeah. It would. Oh, look over there. That person needs a vacuum. <laughs> Next time we got You're right, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> the upgraded leather coat and the upgraded uh, cherished keepsake. Yeah, the these cards just suck. <laughs> <laughs> I think like this is a uh, these are uh, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because also just like if you're like especially like in Silas Marsh, the cherished keepsake just is like you just now don't die, right? Like yeah. it's all you need for your horror soak. And like if you need to soak, this is just going to do it at like the best rate you'll you can get. And then if you it's a, if it's exiled, congratulations. It's just soak for horror or damage for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like good, you, you can also. <laughs> yeah. You can also play it with uh, Joey the Rat. Yep. And before it dies, sell it off. Yeah. Yep. Like, hey, you want to buy a leather coat? It's only got a little bit of. Blood. And then just scavenge it back. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. What uh, a country. Yeah. Then burn after reading, as we said, which is cool. Cool card. Yep, it plays really nice with the Deja Vu, I think. This is actually probably one of my favorite ones that was designed by the committee. Yeah, most of them are kind of garbage. Yeah. Um, what do you mean? You don't like the council's coffers? <laughs> nope. Stroke of luck. After revealing... I don't even know what this one does. This one's actually pretty good. After oh, revealing chaos sick, tokens, the yeah. may choose to exile if you do this automatically successful. Unless an auto-fail token was revealed. Yeah, that seems cool. Yeah. yeah, it's like a little pricey for uh, me. I mean, with Deja Vu, it only costs you one, which I think is pretty... So it should probably be pretty solid in Silas. Yep. Because then you get to see the token, and then you're like, well, I'll just pick it up and save it for a future test. I'll do it. You've convinced me, Travis. Yeah. It even gives you a symbol when you commit. Wow. Is that way you can commit One wild to commit it from your discard pile? Yeah. Let's go. Wow. Yeah, you also can't play this one in uh, Rex Murphy for like... It's fortune. For it's the true. reason. Yeah. For another reason. Yeah. An extra reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's got it's got an extra reason. Uh, no, I think I think that card's really good. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, Fortune or Fate, I think, is just totally like fair. Yeah, no, this is a well designed card too. Yep. Just gives you an extra turn, which is something that's very risky. However, it does exile itself, so you have to pay two experience for it each time, and you can only do it max once per game. They actually like nailed it. Mm -hmm. They had that on there. And then, yeah, and then there's the upgrade. Do you mean this thing. would be unfair if you got to do it, like, eight times in a game? Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then the upgraded fire extinguisher, which is, uh, I think it's the truth. The card's great. Mm -hmm. Like, just the ability to, like, di discard all each non-elite enemy evaded by it. Uh, just, like, it, it's a lot of experience, it's true. But, like, that <laughs> effect, just having it on the card really provides a huge chunk of value. Mm -hmm. Suck it, cats from Saturn. No doubt, eh? Yeah. That's just the, just get rid of them in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> just going around spraying all kinds of spiders down and shit. Dude, what the hell is this? Upgrade and bait and switch. Yeah, this was a card that was printed for Rita <laughs> apparently, and they were just like. <laughs> This card's sick. She cares about evasion, and it's just like not. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually kind of sick. All right. If you succeed in the enemy is uh, not elite, evade the enemy and move it to a connected location. Evade. He's only a non elite enemy at the connected location. If you succeed, evade that enemy and switch locations with it. So then, with Rita, you can use that to then switch locations can, and then hop. Yeah, right. Yeah. You can be so far away. Yeah. Even even without Rita, I think this card has a lot of very cool applications. The downside to it is that it costs three XP. Yep. And uh, it's very difficult to use offensively. Oh, and it actually should be errata. This actually is a trick, not a tactic. So sorry, Mark Harrigan. Interesting. Travis is like, no, <laughs> he's just. That's okay. I don't think he could play he this one anyway because it's level three. I think he only gets oh. level zero tactics. The person who's on this is uh, yeah. Parallel Roland. <laughs> <laughs> no! His two foot. His two foot. Oh, I just think with that two foot, he could fail the test and everyone be like, why'd you put this in your deck? He's like, because I could. Imagine paying three experience for this one. You could just play Ethereal Slip, maybe. Ethereal Slip is. Very similar. Very similar. And not in this binder. No, because it's in my uh, Monster Jack deck. <laughs> in both versions of it, huh? Uh, well, I have my uh, set of, like, I have my upgrades now in standby, oh, okay. so I can upgrade quickly. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, oh, I missed one. Oh, um, yes, this card, that's a red card just because of that. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna search loan because I imagine there's not. Quick, one. we need a we need a green red design. <laughs> Here's like, a green I think, design. I think this Slap is, uh, exile on it. Boom, got him. I think this is a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid. Yeah, pairing of the two. Like if you, it plays very differently if you're a green character than it does if you're a red character. Yeah, no, I mean it's not. Back. It's not bad. It's just yeah. kind of lazy. Like if if you're a red character, it just it's like a one shot pile of resources to do a thing with. Yep. And then never go back to the bank. Yeah. Uh, it is true. And if what? you're playing a green character, you're like, how much money do I have now? I need more money Hello, so we're to do bigger on your, number thing. Collecting your loan, you're like, I'm in a different country. So uh, You can't. I'm not even on the, on the material plane right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, so I'm just curious, what, like, cause, what, what would I spend my money on that I got from this as a red investigator? Stuff. Like? Yeah. Look what I found. Scrapper. So, okay. Um, Scrapper, okay, yeah. Uh, it's the red binder. This costs one, this costs one, this costs one, this costs one, this costs zero, this costs zero, this costs... This costs three bits an ally, this costs one, it's a four cost ally. This cost, I mean, like, there's a couple things here that cost a little bit more. And <laughs> costs zero. Chainsaw costs four, but you're two, gonna... but it's like free, yeah. Okay. This is, it's this it's honestly probably one. whatever your off class stuff is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No. Like if you're Patrice, you could play a much more purple event heavy deck and then play this the unscrupulous loan to fund it. Maybe it's also seeds planting for a future run investigator who cares about having lots of money. Who knows? They'll just do everything here. They'll just they'll just spin the wheel and choose something different for the next one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll get trapped, man. That would be cool. Yep. A hunter. That'd be yeah. cool. That'd be so sick. A little hunter character. I'm surprised we can get some kind of evasion card for uh, one of our green red hybrids. Well, red doesn't evade anymore. <laughs> yeah, red doesn't do that. <laughs> they haven't done that in two years, you idiot. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wild. Maybe something could like let you sell your possessions, mm -hmm. or sell cards out of your hand, or something like that. Yeah, no, this thing—it could be something that comes in the future too, right? Like this for this loan, but also like it's as you said, Brent. It's probably for your off class too. Yeah. Well, we've got a couple minutes left. Yeah, I think we can. I think we can call it here. I'm thinking about of stuff to say. Do we want to talk about any investigators? That's something we we usually do too. Any notable investigators? No. Wendy's cool. None uh, of them are good. None of them are good. Dang. <laughs> Dang. Oh, we talked about Silas. Oh, we talked a little bit about Yorick. Um, Calvin. Patrice is cool. Patrice is cool. Patrice is cool. She's like just, again, it's just the, the other thing went. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's the other one. Yeah. Bob's kind of neat. Bob is neat. He's more green, but because mm -hmm. those dang. The big, uh, the big thing about the survivor investigators is that they all feel much much more different to play them than you know, the last one than the other colors do. Yeah. Yep. Like if you're playing a blue investigator, all right, you kind of got the gist of it. Yeah. Uh, but if you're playing Wendy versus you're playing Will Yorick, like they're two very different games. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. That's and that's why like, I'm always curious to see what the survivor investigator is going to be because it's always, oh, that's weird. Right? Or, oh, that's strange. Or, oh, God, no, please put it back in the box. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> Daniela, she's very different than any of the other investigators that, like, in like just get punched. And then at no point was people going to be like, oh, yeah, Daniela, she just loves to get fucking hit in the face with a two-by-four. That's what she loves doing. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Goodbye, Survivor Binder. Mm -hmm. No, overall, I think uh, outside of the recursion issues, I think sort and maybe the survivor, arguably the survivor ones, Red's a pretty good class. Uh -huh. Pretty well designed. Yeah, yeah. And it's the recursion that's the problem, is or except for drawing thin, that was kind of just because the card was... I mean, like, most classes have just cards that they design poorly. Yeah. yeah. Right, it's not an inherent flaw with the class, it's just a card. Except blue. Yeah. 
Lucky Blue. Just always just... Well, they just kill monsters, and they're like, you yeah. know, just to compare the health to the damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It don't it's have true. the damage too high, and you're good. <laughs> or alternatively, have the damage way too high. Yeah, but for exorbitant, exorbitant cost. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Sick. All right. Well, everyone... Uh, Bridge, do you have anything else you want to add? I can't see your face right now, so I actually don't know. No, no, I'm good. Cool, all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching on this podcast. I'm sure Travis has other topics he wants to talk about for future episodes for this. Yeah, I can come up with stuff. Uh, and I also, on our Patre uh, Patreon page, I have a post going up that people also suggest topics for us to talk about on future episodes of our quote-unquote podcast. In addition, also, if you have any ideas, let us know in the comments down below. What do you think of the Survivor class and all the cards that are in it? A uh, huge thank you to everyone watching and all of our patrons for supporting the channel. Uh, have a good one, and as always, GG's.